Production support for Ohio Educational Broadcasting Award-winning News 6 has come from Whirlpool Corporation's Finley Division, working to make your life a little easier. Additional support has come from the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation and from this public television station. Hi, we're sixth grade students from St. Juan Elementary School in Fostoria. We're here in front of the oldest closed in structure in Fostoria. An underground railroad from the 1800s. Here's what you'll be seeing on News 6 today. An old fashioned cobbler, an electric fine display, and some scaled down trains. Hi, and welcome to News 6. I'm Brad Sauter from St. Juan School in Fostoria, Ohio. Here with our first story is Gina Baker. Electricity is part of almost everything we do today. Usually electricity is invisible. But Mike Williams of Fostoria showed us some demonstrations where we could see electricity. Movies like Frankenstein, My Science Project, and Goonies all have something in common. Besides being a science fiction stories, they all use electricity for special effects like lightning bolts. Mr. Mike Williams makes machines that perform the special effects. One of these machines is a Tesla coil. The Tesla coil takes it in ordinary 120 volts of electricity and transforms it into 600,000 volts. The result is a lightning type discharge off of the top of the machine. The coil creates an almost deafening sound when in operation and can create a discharge of 67 inches in length. Mr. Williams, how long have you been doing this? Well, actually, I've been building Tesla coils for a period of about a year now. I met a Finley resident, and he's the one that got me started. I've been fascinated with him for years, but was never really able to find, you know, much know-how as to how to build them or anything. How long does it take to build a Tesla coil? The particular coil there took me about two months to build. They're not as easy to build as they look. Is lightning powerful enough to kill a human? Yes, lightning is many millions of, millions of volts at, you know, thousands and thousands of amps. Now that coil there, you know, it, it is lethal and it could, it could kill a person, um, especially the primary circuit. You see the copper tubing. Um, it's much more lethal than the secondary is itself. Mike has also built a machine called a Jacob's Ladder that ionizes air and forces the electricity to jump to the top, jump a gap between the two steel rods. Mike can draw a charge through light bulbs and fluorescent tubes. He can also draw electricity through his body to another person using copper rods. If you want more information about electricity, lasers, and test coil or availability of some of these components, write to Williams Electric and Electronics Company, 217 East South Street, Pastoria, Ohio. His shop should be open for business by the middle of this summer. Today's show is being produced by Miss Jody Coleman and Mrs. Kathy Herman's sixth grade classes at St. Juan School in Fostoria, Ohio. Fostoria is located about 15 miles northeast of Finley. The town was founded in 1854 and has a current population of about 16,000. Usually, when we need a pair of shoes, we go to the shoe store and buy them without thinking much about where they were made. We found a man takes, who takes special care making and repairing shoes for the people around Fostoria. Different trades that used to be popular are being changed by progress. Many trades are slowly dying out, and one of these trades is a profession of cobbling. We are very fortunate to have a cobbler in our town. He still has traditional values. His name is Mr. Pete De Caesar. Pete still has an old-fashioned sewing machine and old-fashioned tools also. He's very friendly and knows many things about how Fostoria used to be as far back as the 1930s. What first got you interested in cobbling? Well, it was, uh, it was something about shoes that just interested me. You know what I mean? And I just liked the challenge because I used to watch uh, an old-time shoemaker by the name of Theodore Hummer. 
and I used to watch him fix shoes, and, and I thought I'd kind of like to do this kind of work. What kind of benefits do you get by being a cobbler? Oh, I think it's a, I think you get a lot of satisfaction that knowing you're doing something that could help people. You know what I mean? If they got, uh, instead of throwing their shoe away, well, if it needs a little bit of sewing or needs a heel or needs a sole, it helps people save a little bit of money on shoes. In colonial times, the cobbler was considered an important trade in town. The cobbler would make or repair anything made of leather. He would make horse saddles, harnesses, suitcases, and shoes of any kind. He also repaired the items he could make. But time has changed America's lifestyle. Old trades that were valuable to the community are being outdated. Foreign imported goods such as shoes are replacing the cobbler. But we think that Mr. DeCesar is definitely a great man. When you retire, will someone take your place? Oh, I hope so. According to Mr. Bob Altemeyer, one of the best parts of having a large model train collection is sharing it with others. We visited his, visited his model train museum and found out it really is a special place. Located on McDougal Street here in Festoria is Bob Altemeyer's train museum. Actually, it is more like a railroad fantasy. Mr. Waltemeyer has spent almost 20 years constructing and perfecting his model train setup. He has spent a lot of his time working on this layout. It is obvious that his hard work has paid off. Did you ever work on a train? I never worked on a train, but I worked in the railroad. I was a uh, car inspector on the nickel plate. I started in 1941 and worked four years during the Second World War. Very exciting place to be. What do you like most about this hobby? Well, the thing I like about the hobby is there's much history involved with it. And being a, a former employee in the railroad, and uh, all those things ties together. Is this an easy hobby to start? It's an easy hobby to start, yeah. There isn't much to it, really. I think you've got to have a big desire. You want to do something like this. It takes time and, and a lot of patience. Mr. Waltzmeyer has collected his train scenery and other objects from all kinds of places. Where have some of your trains and materials come from? Well, they come from garage sales, uh, flea markets, train meets. Uh, some was given to me, things that some I bought. That's the hard part. What are some of the rewards of this hobby? Well, there are two big rewards. It's, first of all, we try to put a smile on someone's face. We only, we only failed twice, to my knowledge. And then the big thing is to share with other people. His workshop houses all of his trains and information. You can see all of this and much, much more by making an appointment with Mr. Waltemeyer. Maybe you will get some ideas for starting your own model train music collection. That's all for this week's show. Join us next week when New Six travels to Van Lue, Ohio. Production support for News 6 has come from Whirlpool Corporation's Finley Division, working to make your life a little easier. Additional support has come from the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation and from this public television station.